Good afternoon, good evening. You join New Beginning Community Church. Our pastor is Pastor William Beasley Sr. We thank and praise God for you joining us. We do not own the rights to this music, but we ask you to sing along with us. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's victory in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Mighty is the name of Jesus. Mighty is the name of Jesus. Mighty is the name of Jesus, no other name I know. Bless holy is the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. Holy is the name of Jesus. No other name I know. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. Praise that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name I know. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus, no other name I know. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God once again for another Wednesday night uh, Bible study. Amen. Thank God once again for my mind to uh, assemble together, mm -hmm. study of his word. Thank God for each and every one of you that have joined us in fellowship uh, tonight yes. to study of the word of God. We uh, thank God for each and every one of you, those of you on Zoom and Facebook Live and those on, on YouTube. Thank God for 
the beginnings, we are present, this is, we, uh, we have another, another lesson tonight that is written to the church. Amen. Paul is reminding the church tonight, we are in the book of Galatians, Amen. still in the book of Galatians, we are in the third chapter, the 14th verse of tonight. And uh, we're going to read the, uh, that is our focus verse. And in your, uh, in your spare time, or in your time of study or worship, or dedication, you can uh, go back and you can read verses 1 through 14. But tonight, we're going to just read verses 14, and we're going to deal with that, aided with some other scriptures that we will read. And uh, this, is, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, and he is uh, talking to the, the Galatian church. So this is uh, directly for the body of Christ. So we can take uh, from this, and we can apply it to uh, to ourselves. So this is the body of Christ. This is directly to the body of Christ. And so we're going to pray, and we'll get into our lesson tonight. We'll bow here. Be gracious in heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight just thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you for a mind to assemble together. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have provided, that you all the sacrifices you have made in your body to bring our salvation, Lord God. We thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you most of all, Father, that you are sovereign, that you are so sovereign, Lord, and beside you there is none. And we thank you. We glorify you. We ask that you move in this place on tonight according to your will, according to our need. You said with two or three we gather together. In your name that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to the Spirit of Christ tonight, being in our midst. And we're praising and glorifying in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The, the book of Galatians, third chapter, 14th verse. And so we have, in our attempt to get the word out, uh, we have the lesson up on the screen. And we pray that you are able to, to see it. And it's just our attempt to get the word out because the word is the most important thing as it pertains to the body of Christ. The word is, is, is very important. So we'll be, uh, we'll be studying from the King James Version. So you follow along with whatever translation you use that you have. Galatians, the third chapter, 14th verse. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Read it again. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of of the spirit through faith. A couple of words that uh, we want to describe. Our thought tonight is the promise of the spirit through faith. Excuse me. The promise of the spirit through faith. The entire sentence says, Paul said that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. What I want to know, which is very important for the body of Christ, is that the promise of the Spirit, it is obtained through faith. It is obtained through faith. Keep that, note that as we go through our lesson. That word promise in our lesson suggests to us uh, the Word of God. Suggest to us divine assurance, 
self-committal, something said. God's promise, God's promise is God's self-committal, committal. God's word is God committing himself to it. God's word, God's promise is God committing himself to it, to what he said. Mm -hmm. And the other word that we want to describe tonight is spirit, that word spirit. And that word spirit, as it pertains to this lesson, is the Holy Ghost, its manifestation or materialization or life spirit, life spirit. Mm -hmm. And so now we want to try to put this together. Uh, Paul here is uh, dealing with the church in Galatia. And in the first verse, third chapter, in the first verse, not on the worksheet, but I'm, I'm going to read it in my Bible to kind of set us up. Galatians, the third chapter, in the first verse says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently set forth, crucified among you. Evidently or clearly set forth, crucified among you. Now, what we're dealing with tonight, and now this is not only did Paul write this to the church in Galatia, mm -hmm. but this is for you and I as the body of Christ. We have to understand that the promise of the Spirit and the blessing of Abraham comes through faith. Mm -hmm. Comes through faith. Note that and, and keep that. Keep that. The Galatians had been bewitched, as Paul said, to the point where they had stopped believing the truth. Mm -hmm. They had stopped believing the truth. Uh, and third chapter in verse 2 says, this only what I learn of you, or this question I have of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Now, it is, it is quite uh, it is quite essential that you and I understand that the promise of the Spirit came through the hearing of faith. It came through the hearing of faith. It came through uh, the hearing of the promise of God. It did not come by our works of the law. It did not come by the keeping of the law, but it came by the hearing of faith or the keeping of the word. And so Paul is letting the church know we cannot be uh, bewitched. We cannot be, uh, be, be fooled or deceived thinking that the promise came by the work, working of the law. The promise came, uh, the promise came to you and I uh, through the seed of Abraham, which is Jesus Christ, by the hearing of faith. The hearing of faith. One scripture said, uh, it is by faith uh, that we stand and it's by faith, I'm sorry, the scripture says it is uh, Romans, the fifth chapter, and it, it says it is by faith that we have access unto this grace wherein which we stand. And so what Paul is trying to get the church to know in Galatians is that the blessing of Abraham, verse 14, focus verse, said that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. He's trying to let the church know, you and I, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us uh, that we, in other words, that we might receive, that we might be recipients of the blessing of Abraham uh, through Jesus Christ. All right. That is the that is the first one. There's, there's two blessings in there. The first one is the, the first blessing 
is the one of Abraham, which is right under your uh, focus scripture on the work on the worksheet on the screen. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. And the second one is the promise of the Spirit. And the promise of the Spirit is the baptism of the Holy Ghost or the manifestation of the Holy Ghost or the, or the, or the manifestation of the life spirit. The Spirit is, is the giving, is what gives life. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, these words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. These are the two blessings. Now, we must understand that the Galatians were being bewitched in believing not only another gospel, but they were being bewitched uh, with the keeping of the law. And Paul is trying to correct them and said, look, the promise uh the blessing of Abraham came through Jesus Christ. The promise of the Spirit is through faith. And you and I must maintain our faith in Jesus Christ. Let's dig, let's dig in here. Okay, uh, on the worksheet it says Genesis 15 and 6. Genesis 15 and 6. And it reads, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. This is Abraham. Abraham didn't have a, a seed, a child. Abraham was concerned about uh, an heir to his to his name, an heir. He didn't have he didn't have a child, and so. The Lord promised Abraham a seed, an heir, a child. To make a long story short, mm -hmm. Scripture said, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, if you and I are going to be, be declared or counted righteous in God, Scripture said, Abraham believed in God. Lord. If you and I are going to be declared or counted righteous, you have to understand that it's going to be through faith. It's going to be through faith, not working of the law. Abraham believed God. And that's how the seed came, the child came, because Abraham believed God. Not because Abraham went and did it for himself. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We gotta take our time. We gotta keep moving, but we gotta take our time. Because it's because the, the church is being bewitched. And it and it's so it is so many false teachers that is teaching you and I, or attempting to teach you and I, that these promises and these things are predicated on us going and doing whatever God knows. Abraham, the scripture says, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. The Lord gave Abraham a promise of a seed, of an heir, of a child, and Abraham believed in the Lord. The scripture says the promise of the Spirit is through faith. Abraham believed God's word, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now, if you if you remember the story, story, if you're a Bible reader, you you know that Abraham and Sarah <laughs> collaborated together, and Sarah suggested that maybe he take the handmaid and have a child. Mm -hmm. That is not what the promise was, mm -hmm. and the Lord came back. You know the story. And the Lord chastised him and, and told him that he was still going to have that seed, that child, and it was still going to come from his womb, from the union. Why? Because God cannot, because God cannot 
not swear by anything greater. And he, he swore by himself. He swore by himself. He made that oath by himself. And God, not being a man that he should lie. And so he did not repent of what he told him. And so God uh, came, like he said, according to the time of life, according to the point in time, when Sarah had a son. Like the promise said. The point that I'm trying to get for the body of Christ for you and I is that in spite or despite of what the situation looks like, mm -hmm. Abraham and Sarah were past the age of having children. They were old. Mm -hmm. But it did not void the promise of God. We got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If, you, if the blessing of Abraham is going to come on you and I, it's going to come through Jesus Christ and it's going to come through faith in the Spirit. Yeah. Faith in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, uh, not by might, not by strength, but by my Spirit, said the Lord. As it was pertaining to the rebuilding of the temple. It was not going to be, the temple was not going to be built or rebuilt by the, by the strength or the might of men. It was going to be rebuilt by the Spirit of God. You've got to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Mm -hmm. And it takes uh, it takes faith. It is through faith for you and I to be uh, accounted for righteous. Right. Your works and my works will never uh, deem you and I righteous because uh Salvation, though, because grace is unmerited. You and I can't merit it. Oh, man, I wish I could teach it like I feel it. You and I, grace is unmerited. It's, it's the favor of God. It's because, it's because the Lord promised Abraham had not, it, long before you and I came on the scene. So you, your ride and my ride is to put our seatbelts on, buckle up, and, and, and believe God by faith. Amen. And to believe God by faith is to believe God's word. Amen. Despite of what situation is going on and condition is going on in your life. Because the promises of, of Christ is yea, and in him they are amen. So Genesis 15 and 6 says, and he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. We have to take note. Paul is saying, why, why are you being bewitched? Did, I have one question for you. Did you receive the spirit by the working of the law or did you receive it by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the Holy Ghost by the works you had done or did you receive the Holy Ghost by believing the word of God? The hearing of faith. People of God, how are we at this later day and time now allowing the false teachers to be with you? Yeah. Our, on the worksheet it says the blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. Abraham believed God and he was accounted to righteousness. Right. We believe God and we receive the Holy Ghost, promise of the Spirit, through faith. How in, the, how in this late, late day now are we being bewitched, thinking that, thinking that our justification is coming by the working of the law? Mm -hmm. Or by the working, I don't know, I don't know, hear what the Spirit is saying. Ezekiel, have another witness in the Old Testament before we get to today. Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel, on the worksheet it says the 36th chapter and the 27th verse. Mm -hmm. On your time, you can read verse 27 through 32. I'm sorry. On your time, you can read verse 25 to 32. But today we're going to, in this class, we're going to read Ezekiel 36, 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Listen to, listen to uh, the, the working, listen to the working of the spirit. Listen to the working of the Spirit. He said, I will put my Spirit within you and cause you 
to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. <laughs> the promise of the Spirit through faith, through faith, the promise of the Spirit through faith, through uh, walking in the statutes of God, this is faith, obedience. Uh, keeping the judgments of God and doing them. Don't be a hearer only, but be a doer. Don't be a hearer of the word only, deceiving yourself, but be a doer. We're talking about the promise of the Spirit through faith. We cannot allow false teachers and false preachers and bishops to bewitch us from our justification. Our justification or our salvation came through faith, through believing the, uh, the word of God, or through believing the, the, uh, the promise of the Spirit. God said, I will, Ezekiel he said, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. You got to hear what the Spirit said to the church. The Spirit of God is what prompts you and I. If the Scripture said, He that began a good work in you, it is He that will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. It's the working of the Spirit. This is why it takes faith to be accounted or declared righteous in God. It is never your works and my works because God's grace and God's favor is unmerited. The best thing that you and I can do is to believe God and his word, mm -hmm. as Abraham did. Joel, the second chapter, verse 28 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out uh, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. 29. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. There are two blessings. There are two promises. Two, there, there, there are, I'm sorry, there are two things. Blessing and a promise. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. The promise of the Spirit is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it, the Scripture says, the promise of the Spirit through faith. Uh, Joel prophesied, said, It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. 29. And also upon thy servants and upon thy handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. The spirit, the Holy Ghost is for everybody. Sons, daughters, handmaids, hand servants, old men, young men. The promise of the spirit is through faith. It, is already pro it was already prophesied by Joel. It was already prophesied by Ezekiel that it would, it would be poured out. But the scripture, the focus verse said that we might receive it, the, uh, the promise of the Spirit through faith. It takes faith not only to receive the promise, but it takes faith to be accounted for righteous. Because that that is the blessing of Abraham. I know, I know we've heard over the years, I know we've heard a lot of things described as the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But when you search your Bible, the blessing of Abraham was the justification by faith. By the, it was the fact that Abraham believed in the Lord. Mm -hmm. That was the blessing of Abraham. Justification of faith. Right. Your justification and my justification comes by the same measure, same means, same same means. Uh, faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is 
got the promised seed. Jesus Christ is the promised seed. Mm -hmm. the, the, the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now we're going to bring it a little closer. And we're going to bring it a little closer. The Gospel of Luke, 24th chapter, 49th verse. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, or wait in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high, or until ye be baptized with their spirit, or until ye be filled with their spirit. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. The promise of the Father is the blessing of Abraham. And the blessing of Abraham is the promise of the Spirit. Understanding in our description, Spirit also uh, suggests life, Spirit. Abraham believed in the Lord, and the Lord gave him a seed. Seed is life. I don't want to get in too deep into all that type, but you have to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The point, the point of it is, you and I cannot be cannot be bewitched by thinking that our justification is coming by works, working of the law. Our justification or our salvation is coming by or coming through faith. Mm -hmm. As the body of Christ, it is essential that we understand our justification is coming through faith in Jesus Christ. Now. We, it, we're about to step in some deep waters. The uh, some deeper waters. The Gospel of John, 14th chapter and verse 26. It says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever. I have said unto you, a, a understanding the description, a promise is something said. He said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, we're going to pause right there, because for those of you have, who still have not figured out the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to read this again. See if you can catch it. John 14, 26. He said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. This is Jesus speaking. So next time somebody asks you the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Understanding the promise of the Spirit through faith. He said, the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you, whatsoever the promise was. The promise is something said. The promise is divine assurance. The promise is self-committed. God is committed to his word. It takes faith from you and I to please God because God is committed to his word. And he said he's going to send a comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send it in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he says, want to teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said, whatsoever I have promised you. Mm -hmm. Understand the thought tonight, the promise of the Spirit through faith. The promise of the Spirit through faith. The manifestation of the Spirit is through faith. Now, I have to pause before we go any deeper and any further. I know there's a lot of us out here that don't believe in the Holy Ghost or don't believe in the Holy Spirit. So if you, if you are following the lesson, if you are following the lesson, then you, then you understand that uh, in order to be 
justified or in order to be considered uh, righteous, then you have to, through faith, understand that you have to receive the Spirit, the promise of the Spirit. So if you don't believe in the Spirit, how in the world would you be justified of God? If you don't believe in the Spirit or if you don't reject the Spirit, when he clearly says in his word that the promise of the Spirit through faith, and if you have declared you don't believe in the Spirit or in the Holy Ghost, then you have just told God that you, you have no faith, you don't believe in him. This is very plain. You are, you, you have, you are being bewitched. You are thinking righteousness is coming by your works. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. This promise, the blessing of Abraham was promised to Abraham when Abraham was in uncircumcision. Right. Not circumcision, in uncircumcision. One scripture said, when we was yet sinners and without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And so now we have, some of us have the gall to stand up and say, you don't have to have the Holy Ghost. If you're following this lesson, you're following these scriptures, then you see in, in the word of God that it is the will of God to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. All right. It is time for the body of Christ to stop being bewitched. Oh my God. We we have we have church terminology like I'm saved and I'm a believer. All that sounds good, and it, 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 that, that's churchy stuff. Man, tradition, religious stuff. But the scripture speaks about the promise of God being the outpouring of the Spirit upon all flesh. Amen. And this takes place through faith. And so, if you are one that don't believe in the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, then you are declaring that you, you don't have faith in God. You don't believe God because you cannot believe God any other way. Just as what Paul is telling the Galatians, you are not justified by the working of the law. You, you, you receive the promise through the hearing of faith. Mm. We have to stop being too intelligent. And the Bible declared that we are to believe on Christ as the scriptures have said. Not according to what we think, not according to what we believe we know, but we are to believe on Christ as the scriptures have said. Amen. The promise of the spirit through faith. So if I don't believe in the spirit, then I don't have faith. Let's make it simple and plain since we got to attend it now. All right. The blessed, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. The Gentiles is those of us that are non-Jewish uh, descent or ethnicity or whatever you want to call it. We're, whatever, we're not from Jerusalem, we're not Jews. We're from whatever other nation that we're from, so we're Gentiles. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, the promised seed. Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We cannot receive the Spirit any other way but through faith. You can't say, I got, I, I, I don't need the Holy Ghost. Well, then you, what you need first is faith. <laughs> because this is how the promise comes. What you need first is to stop being bewitched by false teachers and false preachers and learn the word of God and learn what God has required of you. And uh, he has required faith in his promise, which is his word, which is his divine assurance, which is his self-committal. He's committed to his word. And so if you don't believe his word, you don't believe him. Right. You can't make that any plainer. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
You cannot separate what you believe from God. It doesn't work that way. Well, I'm, I'm a believer, but I don't believe you got to have the Holy Ghost. But then you're not a believer because the promise of the Spirit is through faith. Uh, can't make any plan. Moving on. Acts, the first chapter, verse 4 and 5, back on the worksheet. Verse 4 says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, Ye have heard of me, verse 5, for John shall be baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Read that again, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, Jesus was assembled together with them. Amen. With his disciples, whom he had chosen, whom he had made apostles. He said, and being assembled together with them, commanded them, commanded them mm -hmm. that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Commanded them. This is not a this is not an option. This commandment. Commanded them. This is not a, well, I don't believe that you got to have it. Mm -hmm. Commanded them right. that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Wait until you get it. All right. Don't depart from Jerusalem. But wait for the promise of the Spirit. Oh, God, you got to hear what the Word of God is saying to the body of Christ. Who has bewitched you? Receive ye the, uh, the Spirit by the working of the law, or did you receive it by the hearing of faith? Come on, somebody. And then if you have just, and if you have one that declared that you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, the Bible said that uh, judgment begins at the at the house of God. It says so. If it begins at the house of God, where where does the ungodly and the sinner? Where would the ungodly and the sinner appear? The ungodly and the sinner, those that don't believe in the promise of the Spirit, those that don't believe they need the Spirit, you're being bewitched. Acts two and thirty three. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, talking about Jesus Christ, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. This was the day of Pentecost, when they when the people thought that those that were filled with the Holy Ghost were drunk. They thought the people thought they were drunk. Because they were speaking in other tongues and celebrating and shouting, being baptized in the Spirit. And he said, therefore, being, verse 2 and 33, it says, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen to what the Spirit said to the church. Therefore, being highly exalted, therefore being, therefore being by the right hand of God exalted, mm -hmm. and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he's exalted. He's on the right hand of God. Yeah. Exalted. In other words, he's the power of God. The right hand of God is the power of God. He's exalted. He's the power of God. Amen. And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, and he has shed forth this. In other words, he, he filled them with it. He shed it forth. He filled them with it. He baptized them with it, with the Spirit, the promise. He said, which ye now see and hear. You see him baptizing the Spirit to hear him speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give utterance. Oh, my God. We're talking about the promise of the Spirit through faith. Receive ye 
the fruit receive ye the uh the spirit by works of the law or by the hearing of faith. He said, Who did bewitch you? Why have you been bewitched? Why have you been uh, beguiled or deceived? The promise, the, the blessing of Abraham is through Jesus Christ. It is not, it is not through the workings of the law or through the workings of or, or by any other means. It is the, the, the love, the unmerited favor of God. Scripture says, therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted. That is, in other words, that is the power of God. Jesus is the power of God. And if you want to read it on the surface, if you want to say he's exalted on the right hand of God, that makes it even worse. And having received of the Father, the Holy Ghost, in other words, then if you want to read it like that, he's, he's there exalted on the right hand of God with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's shedding it forth. He said, this is what you now see and what you hear. All right. But if you are one that says, you don't need the Holy Ghost, you don't supposed to speak in tongues, you have no faith. Mm -hmm. You have no faith. And you will never receive the promise of God. Paul is talking to the Galatians, to the church. This is to the church. This is to the members of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, my God. All right. Next one. He, he, he's, he's telling them, look, who bewitched you? Who did destroy your faith? Mm -hmm. faith, is, faith is the substance of things hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. Mm -hmm. He said, by it, the elders obtained a good report. He said, by faith, we understand that the world uh, were, were framed by the word of God. Faith. You and I didn't see the world being framed, but we in it. Yeah. So when and where did you pick up faith in God? Ah, we don't need that. that that's, that's amazing how we tell God what we need and what we don't need. What we need is faith. This is why the disciples said, Lord, help, help my unbelief. He said, I believe. He said, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have unbelief in your heart, then pray, Lord, help your unbelief. Because the promise of the Spirit is through faith. You and I are not going to be justified any other way. Abraham was justified because he believed in, Abraham was justified and encountered for righteousness because he believed in the Lord. Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The promise of the Spirit through faith. This is the same, same assembling in, in 2 and 33, where on the day of Pentecost, they were. Uh, the, the promise of Jesus sent the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. And they were all baptized in the Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost through faith and began to speak with other tongues mm -hmm. as the Spirit with others. Now, the other tongues is not a nasty word. If you understand the scripture, the text, other tongues is a, is a other language. They spoke in another language, a language that they didn't speak not their native language. Right. And the Bible, if you would continue to read it, the Bible said, this is the wonderful works of God. Mm -hmm. This is the power of the Holy Ghost right. to, to come in your heart and the Holy Ghost speaks through you. The Bible said they, they spake in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Mm -hmm. The same promise of the Spirit through faith they were waiting for. He, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem until they received it. And then you and I stand up in the midst and say, I don't believe it. Jesus. Jesus is coming back. The Lord is coming back. And if we don't, and if we are not, uh, and if we are not filled with the Spirit or baptized with the Spirit, 
when the church is called away, when the members of the body of Christ is called away, and you don't have the spirit of Christ, then you will not be called away. Mm -hmm. right. Because flesh and blood will not inherit the kingdom. Last one, I'm going to let you go. Romans, fourth chapter, the 16th verse. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. There is no way in God's green earth you can stand and declare to be a Christian and say you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, that you need the Holy Ghost. I'm going to read this one more time. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Mm -hmm. Abraham is the father of many nations. Abraham is the father of many nations. He, the, Lord, the, the Lord said, uh, the scripture said, God, who's able to call those things that be not as though they were. Mm -hmm. He said, I have made thee a father of many nations. Abraham was the father of every nation by faith. By faith. And so as it is always, we encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. The promise of the Spirit is through faith. You will not, you will not receive promise of the Spirit through the working of the law, but you have to receive it through the hearing of faith. You have, in other words, you have to believe the promise. You have to believe the Word of God. And in order to believe the Word of God, the Scripture said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. You can't just be a hearer of the Word. You have to be a doer. Abraham it was accounted unto righteousness to Abraham because he believed God. And yeah. so we pray that you receive something from the word of God. Study, study your worksheet. Study your Bible. If you ever have any questions concerning the word of God and the lessons that we teach, give us an email with your question at NBC or church at gmail.com with if you ever have questions, Bible questions or questions of the lesson and uh, we will return your, your, with an answer from the, from the scriptures you have to understand we, the Bible declared that we have to believe on Jesus as the scriptures have said, not according to what we think or believe we have, faith is accounted Righteousness is accounted to you and I by believing on Jesus as the scriptures have said. Even if it don't make sense to your intellect, his ways is not our ways. His thoughts is not our thoughts. We have to get we have to get out beyond ourselves. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he gotta deny himself, take up his cross and follow after me. So we, we, you and I cannot follow God according to our intellect, according to our recollection. Mm -hmm. you, you and I have to follow God by faith because it is, through, it is a spiritual thing. It's not a carnal thing. It's not a natural thing. It's a spiritual thing. If you believe the account of a virgin having a baby, <laughs> Virgins don't have babies. So if you believe the Virgin Mary had a son mm -hmm. and called his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins, but then it's that same faith 
should allow you to believe in the promise of the Spirit and the infilling or the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All right, we give it up for right now. The bow is be gracious and heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We pray, Father God, that you would move in this place on tonight, that you would touch hearts and minds, that you would give understanding to those that have a desire to those that would seek your faith, that would desire to know you better. We pray that you would re reveal yourself to them according to your word, Lord God. Speak to their hearts and minds, lead them and guide them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. And we pray you, we pray that you would take us from this place, uh, never from your presence, bring us back again at the appointed time. And we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.